the Philippines retirement housing hunt. Where to look, how to look, and how much to pay for retirement housing or short-term housing in the Philippines. Today, 25 different rental properties ranging from 150 US dollars to 1500 US dollars per month. How much should you pay? How little could you pay? It's all here today where we do the Philippines Retirement Housing Hunt. We're gonna show you 25 distinct and unique properties. Game on. Stick around, we're gonna challenge Chrissy to come and select one of these properties if her budget is cut in half. You ready for a challenge? You are? Yes. Okay, so the challenge of the 25 properties. Plus, we have two bonuses today. We've got a Facebook forum answer the question of what should you look out for when you sign a short-term lease here in the Philippines. And secondly, the big bonus, you're retired in the Philippines, you met your Filipina, it's a Monday morning, what the heck are you going to do with your retirement? We've got about 15 to 20 expats. They told us what they do in their retirement here in the Philippines to keep busy. So that's at the end, stick around. The Philippines actually offers different types of weather. If you're a beach bum, you like a boardwalk, you're gonna wanna make that a priority. I wanna be at elevation and I wanna breeze, and I rank that my highest thing. But in terms of weather, we also have to think about natural disasters, typhoons. Between 800 per month and 1500 per month is your low budget. Most of it's gonna really depend on your housing. If you get that $180 housing uh, program, rental yeah you could probably do twelve hundred dollars a month a thousand dollars a month the medium budget is going to be fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month and a high budget is going to be about two thousand to three thousand which is what i'm currently uh doing i spend twenty five hundred dollars a month forty five thousand pesos eight hundred and three dollars a month on housing now let's talk about how to choose what to choose what to look for briefly we did publish the expat first year housing guide we talked about all these subjects in greater detail go ahead and check that out but i'm just going to touch on them briefly do you want to live in the big city makati do you want to walk out your high-rise condo walk across the street to starbucks walk across the street to the mall walk across the street to really good restaurants lots of big city girls that's possible do you want to live in a regional city like i am in cagayan de oro or ilo ilo where they're up and coming financial centers, up and coming business centers. Do you want to live in a gated community? Do you want a security guard? Do you want, and then hospitals. Do you want to live within a half hour of a hospital, 15 minutes of a good hospital? If you're in the provinces and you're living large, well, you might be two hours from a good hospital where you might not survive that heart attack. How big an expat population do you need? Do you need to go to Dumaguete where there's two or 3,000 expats living in town? Every coffee shop you go into is full of expats. Can you live in the provinces where you're the only Western man anybody will have ever seen? What about shopping? How hard is it to get to a large wet market? We, what about transportation? Where is the nearest airport? What about private schools and universities? Uh, you might want to live near a school or live in a city with good universities if you're dating. And don't forget the environmental issues. There's litter, um, there's noise, there's karaoke. And in the Philippines, when it comes to security, the universal security system is to get two large angry dogs and leave them out in front of your house 24 hours a day. Now, those are the types of issues you want to consider, but how do you go ahead and find a property here in the Philippines? Most of the apartment hunting and house hunting websites here in the Philippines just are terrible. But all the properties are on the Facebook groups in the Philippines that are very, very robust. You can sign up back in the West and you go to the Facebook group for Dumaguete Rentals. Go to the Facebook group for Cagayan de Oro Rentals. Go to the Makati Facebook group. All the realtors are hanging around there. They're all posting their listings there. That's where you're going to find all these listings. And that's where the listings that I'm about to show you came from. That's the best way for you to find property. I recommend uh, Airbnb when you first hit the ground. Short-term Airbnbs three days, seven days, 30 days, three months even. Um, you'll pay a little bit more, but boy, the ability to pick up and move. You're living in a developing country. There could be political strife. The political situation could change very, very rapidly. There could be a tsunami where you have no electric power for 60 days. We had a taxi driver in uh, Cebu that took us from Lapu Lapu, the airport in Mactan, to downtown Cebu City. And he was telling us about the, the most recent typhoon he went without power for 60 to 90 days. If you have a rental, if you've signed a 30 or 90 day rental, 
and a typhoon comes through, are you going to stick around? You could just leave town and get a nice place in Makati. Um, before you rent a property here in the Philippines, be careful about the exposure to direct sunlight. Make sure you see the house when it's in the blistering sun with no shade. Find out if the air conditioning units can actually cool the house. See what it's like to be in the house when that sun really hits the house hard. It would be nice to know what the property looks like after receiving a heavy rainfall. And you'd like to go during the noisiest part of the day. Saturday night when people are out and the dogs are home alone can be very noisy. And karaoke time. You want to see if people are having karaoke parties at midnight, 1 a.m. Now, I promised you we'd look at 25 unique properties from the Cagayan de Oro Rental Facebook group. So, go, let's, so let's go ahead and see what's on the market. Most Filipino cities are quite similar. Cagayan de Oro has an uptown area where I live and a lot of these properties are from this uptown area which is more exclusive and a little bit more pricey than the average city. So let's take a look at these rental properties from today. So property number one, 17,000 pesos, approximately $300. It's in a subdivision in Uptown Cagayan de Oro. It's a condo, 15,000 pesos, two bedrooms, one toilet and bath. This property is asking 60,000 per month in the Hillsborough Point subdivision. Really nice property. If money was no object, this is probably the type of house I would like to live in. Patios up high, the inside is gorgeous, stonework, very, very nice. Hillsborough is a good subdivision. It's very, very close to SM Uptown, so you can walk to a lot of places. Traditional home for only 6,000 pesos. Kind of rough, but you could live there. This property's fantastic in the Jasan area. 80,000 pesos a month. Look at what you can get. Approximately 1,500 US dollars. This house for 20,000 pesos is in the Montiero subdivision. It's guard gated. It has a community pool. It's the base model. We lived in this subdivision in the first three months we lived here and we didn't like it. This is the base model with really tiny kitchen, whatever the builder gave you. Here's a property in La Buena Vida, 25K per month. Very nice. Now this property's got an interesting color. It's 35,000 Filipino pesos per month, semi-furnished. Furnished properties are gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you can see the bed doesn't look very comfortable. It's like a foam mattress there. 16,000 pesos a month for this property, small townhome. This property, Bella Vida subdivision, is only uh, 6,000 pesos per month. Here's a property in Opal. It's a neighborhood we rented a property for Chrissy's family. It's a very congested neighborhood, traditional homes, no subdivision. Three bedrooms, two comfort rooms, furnished for 15K per month. Not bad from the outside. Here's a property that's 35,000 pesos per month. It actually looks really good. If I was moving from my current house, I'd investigate this and see the environment, the view, if it had a breeze. You can see the floor area is only 150 square meters. A lot area is six square meters bigger. So this property juts right up, maybe even have a common wall with the neighbor. Here's a property for only 8,000 Philippine pesos per month. It's about $150 a month. Two bedrooms, one bath. That's what you get. Here's an apartment for rent, 15,000 pesos. It's a micro apartment with a micro shower. This is a very popular condo complex called Mesa Verte, and it's going to be a studio for $25,000 a month. You're going to get a foam mattress probably. It's going to be very small. It's a studio. The kitchen's going to be tiny, but it'll have a community pool and you'll have some of the amenities of a nicer condo complex like playgrounds for the kids. This property, the Familia apartment, is $8,500 per month. It's in a busy a part of the city, a lot of traffic, can't really walk from there anywhere. It's 8,500 pesos a month. This property was asking 40,000 pesos a month, just gorgeous. Look at the size of that property. Now here's a property for 12,000 Philippine pesos per month. It's two bedroom and a bath, it'll do. Now here's a studio in Mesa Verde for 22,000 pesos a month, about $400. It's a popular condo complex, playground, chapel, basketball court, fitness gym, swimming pool. You have to pay the Wi-Fi, electric, water, and HOA dues, so really it's about 500 per month. Here's another condo, 18,000 per month, semi-furnished studio. You can see the kitchen's not much to look at, but great view. Here's a property, furnished, newly built pad for long-term and daily rent. Here's a property for 10,000, two bedrooms, one toilet and bath, live like a local. This is actually just outside my subdivision, but it's on the main road. So it's not behind the gates and it's not in one of the nicer communities. And here's another um, nicer 
a condo downtown for uh, a studio, a high-rise studio downtown in Centrio, right next to a beautiful mall. You're right downtown. This would be a good option, especially if your girl was working downtown. And here is a brand new house, newly renovated, fenced and gated. This is my view. Now, I pay 45,000 pesos per month, which is about $803. So Christy, we just showed 25 properties listed in the Facebook group for Cagayan de Oro. We're currently paying 45,000 pesos a month. You and some of the viewers are always telling me I have rocks for brains and you think we're spending too much money. The challenge. Game on. You ready for a challenge? You are. Yes. Okay, so the challenge, mm -hmm. just based on these pictures and not much information. Mm -hmm. Of the 25 properties, quite a few are available for less than 25,000 pesos a mm -hmm. month. And tell us which is your top selection. If we had to, if we had to live somewhere else and we had to move next week, which one of these properties under 25,000 pesos a month would you suggest we live in? And then is there one of these properties that's under 15,000 pesos a month that you would you think I might survive? You would you put me there <laughs> to save uh, money? We'll see. Okay, yeah. so I picked one house which is under twenty five thousand pesos, and also one house that is under fifteen thousand pesos okay. per month. Well, you want to start with so the fifteen first or the twenty five? The twenty five, like under okay. twenty five. You want to start with the twenty five? Okay, so this is under the twenty five because it's fifteen. The other one is under fifteen. Oh my god! Yes. What are we doing? You're, you're going to put the savings in your piggy bank, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is, um, um, I picked these houses. The, which one? Without... The, one in, the one in Opal? Yes, first is the one in Opal. Because... Three bedrooms, two comfort mm -hmm. rooms, furnished. Yes, 15k a month. Wow. Well, yes. And, what do you, and you know the neighborhood because we rented a place for your yes. parents there. Very congested. A little. Closer to the airport. Yes. Pretty what much. I like about it is there is a gate. Mm. So we to the house, have, not yeah, the neighborhood, the but to the house. Yes, yeah. the house. Mm. It is a gated house. Yeah. So actually, if the house has a gate, it also adds uh, to its security. Mm. Okay. And also the people will have their uh, limits to go closer to the mm. house to or even to the gate. Right, so right. yeah, that's a plus. I also like the house and... You know, um, without knowing what's the neighborhood and what the place is, mm. really. Right. Um, yeah, so we have to think about that too. Okay, wow. And then. So that's how much we're saving? We're saving uh, 500 US dollars or more per yes. month. Yes. And the second one that is, you told me to pick one under 15,000 pesos. Yes, yes. Okay, so or I. 15,000 or less. Yes. So the one is this 12,000 pesos. The house in the neighborhood is gated. There right. is a uh, how much is tall this one? fence. 12,000 12, pesos. Wow, that's yes. like $230 a yes. month. So, well, uh, for sure, this is not fully furnished because it's very low price. Yeah. But I think it's we don't. It's not furnished at all. Yes, we don't need a lot actually. But we have no furniture. Furniture, we have a TV. We, can, we, we have, yeah, we have, we have a TV. We have we a TV, have, a karaoke yes. speaker. How do you know if the karaoke parties go at 2 a.m.? You've got to come back at night. I think um, you have to ask the neighborhood. I don't think if you have to put 100% trust on the realtor because mm. of course they will give you all the positive story. things about the house. Yeah. I think what the best thing we should have um, done uh, before renting this house is we have to talk to the HOA admins. Right, because yes. we did an orientation we learned yes. a lot. So if you will pick a house from a subdivision, I think you better talk to the HOA administration yes. first. Mm -hmm. You know what? I've seen um, a lot of um, houses here that is like 6,000 pesos a month. Mm -hmm. You want to move yeah. into one of those? And well, if I'm living alone, I can be in that house. So if I say, so <laughs> Stick around. We're going to share some Facebook feedbacks about retiring here in the Philippines and what you should do in your daily life. If people subscribe, Mm -hmm. Would you consider them your friend? You're our social media friends. They are like our e-friends. I call them e-friends, electronic friends. So when it comes to signing a lease, Adai writes on Philippine expats, 40,000 plus members, what types of things should I be cautious about when renting short term? Well, Dave writes a really nice post that covers a lot of stuff. 
Water and power are your biggest concerns and often overlooked. Maintenance, third. Water pressure is next after that. Bugs, mostly ants, gnats, and mites. Barbara writes, they may ask for a large security deposit. Expect them to quibble and argue when it should be paid back. Jeff writes, cleanliness usually gives it away. Check the bed sheets and kitchen cabinets for signs of roaches. And very important is potential noise issues, including street noise, roosters, etc. Doug writes, people advertising property that is not theirs. Bradley says, flooding potential, water stains, evidence of leaks, water pressure. Tony says, always look at the contract to see what you can and can't do. It's always in the fine print. Somak says, just book an Airbnb. It's best for you to land there. The site is authenticated and reliable and you get what you see in the pics and reviews. From Philippine expats with over 40,000 members on Facebook, Lance asks, what do people do once they've found their Filipina and they found their house? What do they do to keep busy? Rick says, who wants to stay busy? Frank says a man's got to have passions. He traveled all over the Philippines when he was younger, but time has caught up to him. He's built and sold a few homes, and he's busy renovating a third right now. Felix says I keep busy with making pics of every jeepney in Ilio. Alan says three hours in the gym every day, 12 to 14 hours of work online. Wow, it doesn't sound like much retirement. Douglas says 12 ounce curls, sometimes pint curls. Jake says brush up on your karaoke. Harris says socialize with the ladies, walk through various barangays, people watch at the mall, sometimes sweets at the French baker. David says study Tagalog at, or local dialect. Sean says up in the province, we have chores to do in the morning. We tend to the goats and the pigs and the chickens. Don says swim, walk, ride, bike, play, pickleball, read, garden and entertain. Bernard says, doing nothing is exhausting. Brian says, I'm married with a family of four. Kids, there's plenty to do. David says, buy a used car and spend time fixing it up. Larry says, retired 10 years ago. Not familiar with the word busy. Rick says, I'm retired. I don't want to stay busy. Bob says, much the same as anywhere. Restaurants, bars, movies, the mall, hiking, traveling, barbecues with friends. The French provider says, complain about everything. Make inappropriate comments in the chat rooms. If your girl complains, send her to the mall. Enjoy the view. You are in paradise. Thank you to everybody. Hey, for your karma and for Chrissy's and mine, please subscribe. We really want to hear from you. We're answering 100% of all comments at this point in our YouTube career. So please comment below. Don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button for Philippines retirement, Philippines expat, and how to live your best life with a Filipina at your side. Please subscribe. Till next time from Fly Me to the Philippines. It's Chrissy and Rob. See you guys.